In today's wrap up, the US greenlights $5.4 million of extra aid to Armenia to battle the pandemic. The arrest warrant for ex President Serge Sarkisyan's son in law, Mikhail Minasyan, has been revoked. 596 new cases of COVID 19 have been confirmed. Russian gas giant subsidiary Gazprom Armenia has insisted on raising prices in Armenia. And the chairman of the State Revenue Committee, David Ananyan, has resigned. U.S. Ambassador Lynn Tracy has announced that the United States will provide an extra $5.4 million to Armenia to help the country combat the coronavirus pandemic. Ambassador Tracy stated that the money will be used to assist the government as well as small and medium-sized businesses. Besides this increase, the State Department and U.S. aid have already pledged $36 million to assist with Armenia's coronavirus response. Some of those funds will be used to improve laboratories and support technical experts. In other news, the International Monetary Fund has increased its emergency loan package to Armenia to $315 million, an increase of around $35 million. The loan is meant to support the business community and mitigate social and economic risks. Armenia's Court of Appeal has revoked an arrest warrant for former President Serge Sarkisyan's son-in-law, Mikhail Minasyan. Minasyan had also previously served as Armenia's ambassador to the Vatican and is also one of Armenia's most prominent media tycoons. He was charged earlier this year with corruption, falsifying official papers and money laundering and his arrest was ordered in May. After the Armenian Revolution, Minasyan left Armenia and has refused to reveal his whereabouts. He has also denied all charges and stated he would not return to Armenia. Vice President of the National Assembly, Alain Simonyan, lambasted the court decision and stated that this was clear clear proof of Armenia's desperate need for judicial reform. 596 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in Armenia, raising the total number of cases to 11,817. 45 more recoveries are reported and 7 new deaths. In other news, Georgia has reaffirmed its readiness to help Armenia combat the pandemic. The spokesperson for the Georgian Foreign Ministry stated that the Prime Ministers of both countries have held phone talks, as have other individual ministers, adding that Georgia is ready to provide necessary assistance to Armenia. Georgia has only confirmed around 800 cases of coronavirus, significantly less than Armenia. Gazprom Armenia, a subsidiary of Russian gas giant Gazprom, has again insisted on raising consumer prices in Armenia. Gazprom Armenia had already requested that it raise retail prices by 11% in April. In January 2019, the price of imported Russian gas was raised from $150 to $165 per thousand cubic meters, but consumer prices did not rise. Armenia's government has been urging Gazprom Armenia to accept a modest 4.6% rise instead of 11%. The chief executive of Gazprom Armenia, Heran Tadevosyan, stated that the supply of gas to Armenia was the risk. Recently, a video conference was held between the leaders of the Eurasian Economic Union member states. Both Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko complained about the high gas prices. But Russian President Vladimir Putin called for greater EEU integration as a precursor to uniform tariffs throughout the Union. The chairman of the State Revenue Committee of Armenia, David Ananyan, has resigned. Ananyan, who is Armenia's tax chief, did not provide any reason for his decision, but did thank Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan for entrusting him with the position. Pashinyan did not make any immediate response to the announcement. Ananyan was appointed shortly after the Armenian Revolution in 2018, but he had also served as Deputy Finance Minister during the old Republican Party regime prior to the revolution. And finally, a Black Lives Matter protest took place yesterday outside the United States Embassy in Yerevan. The protesters wore black and carried placards, much in the same way other George Floyd protesters have across global cities. The police later shut down the protest due to the emergency state regulations, with two protesters handing in a letter to the embassy to be delivered to the US ambassador.